Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It occurred to me that you probably think that I'm a very neat and tidy crafter, so I thought I'd actually show you what my desk looks like at a typical crafting session. Here are some tags that I'm gonna show you how to make today. Just uh, more of an inspiration than a tutorial. I will show you a couple, but it's more to show you how to use your supplies. Um, I've got like my watercolor buckets and I've got, you know, knitting over there that I've started. I am just a hot mess when it comes to the way I um, approach a craft project. I've got various punches and ink pads on the floor. I spill over and I've got, you know, a binder full of stamps that I've been using. But um, even though it looks like a complete mess here, I actually have a method and it actually has to do with minimal supplies. So I'm going to show you what I mean about um, making my supplies minimal. As soon as I clean up some of this mess, I'll be right back. Well, as you can see, I didn't clean up, but I did find a uh, made enough room to put my tripod on the table. Um, so, okay, limited supplies. What I mean by that is, first of all, I'm limiting my colors. And um, my YouTube friend Stampyra sent me a bag full of goodies, and one of these things was a uh, color coach, which is basically like some paint swatches and different color ideas. And I was wanting to make some gift tags for some knitted um, things that I've made, and I had a lot of purple in there. And so I really like the look of this uh, rich razzleberry pear pizzazz and tempting turquoise together. I don't. I only have tempting turquoise but I have enough of the other colors that are close enough that I really like that color combo and so um, I grabbed my turquoise ink pad my olive ink pad and my burgundy ink pad or actually eggplant ink pad I grabbed a neutral which is caramel I am just full of colors that have been discontinued today and then I've got my basic black because I know I'll do some uh, line stamping so I've got neutrals plus those three colors um, I decided to keep it simple and I just chopped up some cream cardstock into ATC sized uh, pieces and I also die cut um, some cardstock and some watercolor paper with my uh, bread tags die but then I realized this is probably discontinued too because I've had it forever so I'm going to show you how you can make very uh, very similar things without having to have special supplies or particular stamps or what have you. So I'm actually using stamps from dozens of different um, sets. Well, maybe not dozens, but many different sets from many different companies. For instance, this here, I got this set for about four or five dollars at Joann's. It was one of their it's one of their uh, companies they carry, and it's all about knitting. And I keep all of my crafty stamps, my stamps that have craft themes, which I have quite a few, in this binder so I can just flip through and see what I have. I have a button set from, um, oh, Paper Tray Ink. I have um, some lovely backgrounds from Impression Obsession. And I just mix them all together and they all work beautifully together. So don't be afraid to mix your stamps from different manufacturers. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, well, I'd like to get my work published one of these days, and I'm afraid that if I use old product or if I use stuff that is from different companies that they won't accept my work. Well, you know, there are some magazines that are like that, but you know what? Most of them have gone out of business, and a lot of the ones that are left will take good artwork, and they don't care um, how old your supplies are, um, how, how old they are. Scott Publications, you know, they don't care if you're using a butterfly that's five or ten years old because people can still go buy butterfly stamps you don't have to have um the newest and latest from the most popular company okay there's the end of that rant um so i've made up a bunch of little tags which i will use to um gift my homemade goodies with my homemade knitwear because i don't sell my my knitted goods that's another tangent um there's so much time that goes into knitwear and people you know are expecting to pay walmart prices for scarves and mittens and stuff that you make and i have way too much time in a pair of mittens to sell them for three dollars and um i know that that's kind of a depressing attitude but I'd rather give it away to my friends and family than try to sell it. Um, all right, so <clears throat> here is one way. I'm just going to throw it at you. I don't really have a plan here. Um, I'm just It's just like you're crafting with me on a typical weekend. And um, anybody who's crafted with me knows that I'm a big old spaz. And yeah, this is about right. <laughs> okay, so I got this beautiful background from um, Impression Obsession at the last stamp show I went. Excuse my... <laughs> you can probably hear my laundry going <laughs> upstairs. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just using my markers and I am going to um, color in my just enough of this huge stamp. I'm just coloring in enough so that I can, um, you know, have enough to stamp an ATC and I'm just using some markers and I'm using these memento ones. Um, and I also have a Stamper's Big Brush Marker. have to say mementos are my favorite right now because they're easy to find, inexpensive, and are fabulous. And then I'm just going to press um, this ATC size card I cut with my, um, oops, no, not that one. That one's actually got something stamped on the back. Um, this one I cut just down with my paper trimmer. 
And when I'm working on the back of a big stamp like this, then I put a piece of scrap paper over it and just rub over the back to keep my hands clean. And then I have a really funky, fun background. So that's one way you can make a really quick, um, easy gift tag. Now I like to round my corners. So um, I actually saw this on sale somewhere. I got this as a gift for Christmas. Um, and it's got two size quarter rounders. It's got a, a narrow one and a wide one. I like the small one for my ATCs and gift tags. And you can actually cut through chipboard and lots of stuff with this. Um, gosh, I don't, where did I see it? I think it might have even been the AC More Flyer or on Amazon. I'm not sure, but it was like on sale clearance for 12 bucks. So if you want one of these, you might want to look around for it um, in case they're going out. Um, and then I also like to punch a hole and you can use a regular hole punch or this is actually one I bought because I do a lot of craft fairs so I can hang it on my peg displays. So I have that. And then I can simply stamp um, something on another piece of cardstock, cut it out, stick it on, or I can over stamp if it's not too, um, not too bright. Something I did with that one, I just stamped a little, a little, um, like a little care label, a little hand knit for you label. And I stamped a few buttons and punched them out and that's how I finished that. Quick and easy tag, very, very fun. All right, so something else I wanna show you how I was limiting my supplies. I showed you I was just using um, knitted and sewing theme stamps. Um, and I was just using either watercolor paper or cardstock. And um, I also limited my colors of pencils. So what I have here are my new Graphitint. And you can use whatever markers or watercolor pencils you have. And I actually wanted to show you this side by side with markers um, on watercolor paper. So here I'm just gonna quickly color in on watercolor paper. Watercolor paper tends to work a lot better than um, cardstock when you're using watercolor markers or um, watercolor crayons or um, watercolor pencils, anything like that, because it's designed to handle the water. And I'm just going to throw in a little bit. I think this one is my lighter one. Actually, I'm just going to throw a little bit of this around the edges just so you can see how quick and easy you can color an image. You don't have to take all day. Oh, no, I'll put a little, that is a little bit lighter. I'll put those both in there. And um, then I can either use a wet paintbrush or I can use one of these blending pens. The blending pens are really fun because um, you don't, you just scribble off on paper. You don't have to have a bucket of water. So you just can color it in. You can see the two tones that I put down there. Scribble it off. You can go right into my next color. And so this and just some pencils would be really easy. You could stamp out a bunch and color them in while you're watching TV at night. Um, anything to make it a little bit easier. Now I like to have a little something extra on my tags. I like these little, uh, this little tiny um, stamp is by Pink Persimmon. It's just a price tag, but I think it's so cute. It's like from a pattern label. And then I can use um, my color duster and a color that is... Um, that will look nice with it like this avocado and just kind of brush on some color Just make sure that your stuff is dry so you don't um, Don't smear it. I would have waited a little bit longer, but as you can see it turned out all right. So now that was the one with the um, Pencils I'm going to show you with the markers uh, You have to work a little bit quicker with the markers, but if you're working on watercolor paper, you'll have a pretty good um, You'll have a pretty good a good workout. Hey Lila, my daughter just came down here. Could you grab me a light brown marker from that cinder block over there? Yes, it's, it's handy when they wander in at the, when you're actually, yes. when you need an extra hand. Um, a little bit darker than that. Yeah, this is the one without a plan. There goes my, uh, there goes my sub pump. It's probably going to be hard to hear me. Now see, that's really hard to blend, but if I use that, I press it on the tip of my marker like that. I can get enough transferred over so that I can get a nice blend. I almost turned that into like a really pale version of that marker. Thank you. I'm going to do the same thing with the green. I'm hoping you can still hear me. You can also scribble this out on an acrylic block and get a really, um, really nice effect that way. Use it like it's a watercolor palette kind of and see the marker is much darker when it comes from the marker, so you can get a nice blend that way. You just need to learn how to use your tools. There's nothing, and how to put the cap on apparently, and, and, but there's nothing, um, there's not, nothing tricky about it. You just need to know how to use them. And whoops, I keep wanting to put that little cap on all these. Let's scribble that out. 
And that one blended up a little bit easier, actually. So there we have that, and Lila grabbed me my brown marker, because I was unprepared. I could have just used the pencil, but I'm just going to fill in a little bit of the color in the shadow areas. Oops, I went out of the lines, but it's just a gift tag. It's not a big deal. And then I can spread it around on the watercolor paper. It doesn't work as easy on cardstock, so if you're using cardstock, scribble it on a stamping block, like a one you're not using, obviously, and color it like that. So there's a couple different ways to make the tags. Um, you know, and basically I just wanted to offer some inspiration, like, oh, for instance, these bread tags are cool because they have these split, um, these split little notches, so you could just kind of stick them on a string after you've already wrapped a present. So I thought, well, how can I replicate that? Because I don't think those tags are available anymore. So then I thought, well, I've got all these little hand punches. I've got this one here that's like a flower. Punch that. Oops, I stuck my paper in the wrong area. Hold on, let's put, try this from the other side. Put the paper in the right spot. Punch it. And then you can just take your scissors and snip it and you've got a little hang tab like that. You can do the same thing with a heart-shaped punch. You do the same thing with, um, like I did that, I did this with a heart-shaped punch. That wasn't a fancy die or anything. So, you know, make your tags out of what you have. Cut your paper the size you want it. Stamp on it. They're going to be great. Use what you have. If you limit your theme and you limit your colors, it's going to be a lot easier. I'll show you a few more of those tags because that, that is so noisy. I think I just need to stop this video. I hope I've given you some inspiration on uh, ways that you can make your tags for your holiday gift giving or just any gift giving throughout the year. Maybe even craft fair displays. I use little cards like this to hang my earrings on. Um, so basically that's all I want to do. Just give you some, you know, inspiration on your weekend and I hope you have some time to create. Thank you so much for watching this crazy video. Until next time, happy crafting.